to me Hi, we're Press Gang Mutiny, and this is The Shanty Show, the show about sea shanties. I'm Richard. I'm James. And I'm Stefan, and in every episode, we're going to be talking to somebody from the world of shanties, and we've got a banger to kick us off. Our very first interview is with Mr. David Coffin. David is a singer and educator based out of Gloucester, Massachusetts. Uh, he's also the song leader for the Revels musical program. He is the director for the narration program for Boston Harbor Cruises, uh, and his music, and in fact, he himself, uh, were featured recently in the uh, motion picture Blow the Man Down. We're going to have a whale of a time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Uh. There were three ships in Frisco Bay to me way, hey, hey. hey. Yeah. There were three ships in Frisco Bay a oh, long time ago. And one of those ships who was Noah's old ark to me way, hey, 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 hey. All covered all over with hickory bark a oh, long time ago. ago. They took two animals of every kind Tell to me way, hey, 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 hey. They took Two animals of every kind a oh, long time, time ago. ago. The bull and the cow, they started to row. Tell to me, way, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. The bull and the cow, well, they started to row. Oh, a long time, time ago. ago. Then Noah, he said, with a crack of his whip, to me, way, hey, 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 yeah. you stop that row or I'll scuttle the ship a, a long, long time, time ago. ago. Then the bull put his horns through the side of the ark. To me, way, hey, 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 yeah. the little black dog, he started to bark a, a long, long time, time ago. ago. So Noah took the dog, stuck his nose in the hole. To me, way, hey, 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 yeah. And ever since then, the dog's nose has been cold. A long time ago. Well, it's a long, long time and a very long time. To me, way, hey, 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 yeah. A long, long time and a very long time. A, a long, long time, time ago. ago. <laughs> Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, and David, welcome to uh, The Shanty Show. You are our very first guest. Uh, and we couldn't be happier uh, to be kicking things off with you. Um, I thought we might start with just um, getting a little bit of, of your backstory. Um, and in particular... How on earth did you end up singing shanties and sea music? Because your father was a classically trained pianist, your grandfather was a pianist, and your great-grandfather was a classical music conductor. So what the heck happened to you? Wow, someone did their homework here. I, 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 I'm, I'm really good at Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> well, my father was, tr was, uh, was going to be a classical pianist. He studied at the uh, Paris Conservatory for four years, I believe, with Nadia Boulanger, which is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty impressive. But then he went into the ministry and became known as a, as a minister for sure. But yeah, the, uh, the musical dream genes, the musical genes are, uh, are, are, are fairly strong. And that's, I like that. I, you know, I draw on that. Um, I, I actually started out as a wind player and I don't know if you're, uh, if you're subjected to the recorder up there in Canada, uh, <laughs> but every, every third or fourth grader down here is forced to play the recorder. And by the time I was in third grade, I was really cool, but only in music <laughs> class because I had been playing the recorder since I was four years old. We had, uh, we uh -huh. had a woman living with us who was a graduate student at Yale in music, and she moved in to help take care of us three Hellions. And she taught the recorder and she taught us all how to play, play the recorder. And I stuck with it. So 56 years later, Oh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> um, I'm still I'm still playing, and uh, and I I do school programs based on wind instruments and all that stuff. Hmm. But uh, do you have a recorder there with you? 
So here, your basic soprano recorder, not so basic. This is a custom, uh, custom recorder built to play a very specific kind of music uh, from the uh, 1400s, but I'll just play a little riff on something. Wow. Nothing fancy, but you know, fast. Kids yeah. love that. Oh, I was gonna say, not, that sounds pretty fancy to me. <laughs> it, just improvising. Killer. But, did you ever, uh, sorry, did you ever branch off and do a little tin whistle playing or anything like that? Oh, I've got a whole collection. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I have wow. a whole collection of wind instruments. I could give you the grand tour if you wanted. Amazing. Gems horns, you know, the 13th century predecessor to the recorder, the ocarinas, the. Wow. Double reeds, the bombards from Brittany. The, oh, yeah. wow. Those are yeah. noisy. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of hot air behind this guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was, I was going to make that joke. Yeah, I thought I'd be good. Uh, yeah, I should have. <laughs> still, still my thunder. So did, did, did the, the, um, the interest in sea songs and sea music come out of a, a broader interest in kind of historical music then? Is that, is that the path? I'll, 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 uh, I'll follow the progression here from the recorder because there, there, is, there is logic somewhere in this. <laughs> playing the recorder, playing wind instruments and singing, of course, you know, I've been singing since I can remember. But at some point, I guess I was in my 20s, um, I wanted to do more with my voice, you know, do, do more singing. And I wanted to accompany myself, which you can't really do with a wind instrument. I mean, mm. you can, but you shouldn't and certainly not in public. <laughs> I, you know, I started to think, well, what, what, what do I want to play? Well, everyone plays the guitar, so I want to be a little different. Uh, that hasn't been obvious yet. And I thought about the banjo, eh, not a big fan, don't like tuning, um, you know, strings. Um, piano, no, that family's got that one covered. So I thought about the concertina. So I went to our local music store that has, you know, an incredible, uh, a variety of different instruments, bazooki and you name it. And they had a, they had a, you know, a halfway decent concertina and I picked up the concertina and I sat down for about half an hour and I thought, if I can figure something out and make some progress on this in half an hour, then I'll, then I'll do it. And after half an hour, I sort of figured it out and, you know, made a little progress, certainly not an expert, but so I went home and I thought about it and I, I looked around and I found a really nice one. I got very lucky early on. I'm a strong proponent in having a high-end instrument so you set your sights high. If you have a you know, really you know, dumbed down plastic something, it's not gonna inspire you with the sound. There's mm -hmm. something about beautiful tools. Yeah, yeah, if you start out something that's, with something that sounds really nice, you're gonna be inspired to, to, to do mm -hmm. better. And so I had a really nice concertina, certainly better than what I needed at the time, but you know, I have an ear and I'm completely self-taught. And as I started to work on the concertina, I started to think about, well, what was played on the concertina? Mm -hmm. Well, what do you know? C music showed mm -hmm. up right quick amongst other things, obviously, you know, Salv Salvation Army Band, music and parlor okay. songs and so forth. But the maritime music really got me. And, you know, concertinas were often found on board ships because they're small and they're plenty loud. You know, you couldn't bring your, 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 your piano on board or anything like that. Space was at a premium. So the concertina found its way on board these ships. So a lot of maritime music and obviously from that came the sea shanties. And out of that, actually, you know, I started to learn a lot of maritime history through the songs, which is such a cool way uh, to learn history is through traditional songs. Obviously, that's not enough. You got to take the song and then dive a little deeper and do some reading and, you know, do a little bit more research. Wikipedia as, you know, and beyond, of course. But uh, it was through the concertina that I got to the maritime music and through the maritime music, I actually learned that my family used to own Nantucket. Now, I did not know that before. And for okay. those of you out there who may not know what Nantucket is, it's a historic island off the coast of Cape Cod down here in Massachusetts, where I live in, in Gloucester. 
And it was at one point the whaling capital of the world. Some people think that was New Bedford. Some people can be wrong. That's okay. It's forgivable. <laughs> but they're rival ports, Nantucket and New Bedford. They were rival whaling ports back in the day. Today, they're still rivals, but only in sports. But Nantucket was my, um, my great times 11th grandfather, Tristram Coffin, who came over from Devonshire, England in 1645, landed here in Massachusetts and built a house right up the road from me uh, wow. in Newbury. And the house still stands, the Tristram Coffin House. It was owned by Coffins from 1645 to 1910. Isn't that something? And then it was donated as a museum. So no one oh. outside the family has ever owned that house. Isn't that it's really something? really cool. Yeah. In 1659, he got tired of the Puritan ethic here in Massachusetts. <laughs> and went out to Nantucket, bought the island for 30 pounds and two beaver hats. I'm thinking it was a cold November day, <laughs> throw in the hats, the island is yours, my friend. Wow. So he and, and his, you know, plethora of children, you know, long cold winters, went out to Nantucket and settled out there, learned whaling, of course, from the Native Americans who knew all this before we did, and established Nantucket as a whaling community. And they all became ship captains and whalermen, harpooners, some of them became hors d'oeuvres. If you read In the Heart of the Sea, one of them was on board the whale ship Essex and didn't fare so well. Wow. He threw the short stick. He was cannibalized. Uh, so naturally, I never met him. But it, uh, there's, you know, there's a long legacy uh, and connection to these songs that I didn't realize I had. So now when I'm singing these songs and teaching these songs to kids in my school programs, I, I feel the roots. You know, I really I feel it. And it's, it's a really awesome experience to, you know, feel like I'm bringing these songs back to life with some credibility to it as well. So and I think, you know, some of that hopefully comes through in the, in the music and the sound and the presentation. But it all started with the concertina. <laughs> that's wild. That's fascinating. Short that story crazy? long. But that's <laughs> uh, David, that story uh, of how you, you've got the roots that go back to the origins or the, the beginnings of uh nantucket as part of the united states as we know it um and i'm reminded of an expression what's bred in the bone will out the flesh uh so mm -hmm. I, I find that very interesting that that is part of your history and that you discovered it sort of haphazardly in a way oh absolutely <laughs> yeah wow you know, your family didn't really talk about nantucket that's for sure i mean it just wasn't wasn't part of daily conversation right <laughs> and we'd never gone out there as kids or anything like that so now, growing up in Massachusetts, were you like aware of the, the naval history? It seems like it's it's a big part of the history there. Was that something well, that when I when I moved it? to Massachusetts, I started to learn a little bit more about that history, and that's you know pretty much times out with when I started picking up the concertina. Mm. <clears throat> so it all it all sort of came together. One of the things I've been doing for the past ten years on a seasonal basis is I run the narration program for a huge boat company in Boston. So okay. I hire and train all the narrators and we do the history tours of Boston Harbor. Oh, wonderful. And, uh, you know, the harbor and the, on the islands. And, you know, you can imagine Boston Harbor is rich with history. Const it you know, the USS Constitution is there. Mm -hmm. Donald McKay's shipyards were there. Uh, the clipper ships mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, Old North Church, Bunker Hill. So the, the maritime history in just in Boston alone is, is pretty rich. And uh, so I, you know, I've learned all that history. I used to be a singer in a living history tour oh, of cool. Boston Harbor, which is actually how I learned all that history. Again, through music, mm. I was hired to research songs to put into a living history tour with an actor. So it was actually a scripted show. And the captain was an integral part of it because he had to keep the timing on the tour, so we would arrive at the USS Constitution in time to talk about the powder monkeys that worked on board ship, mm. and then you know get over to Donald McKay's shipyards, and then you know the next spot. So for five years, we did two shows a day, seven days a week, all wow. summer long. And I wow. thought this was such a cool idea that in researching the songs, I thought, no, I think I'm going to hire myself as the singer too. I can do that. I'm in charge here. So I hired myself as the singer, and through doing all that, I learned all this history. When the show petered out, um, I went to the boat company and said, you know, you should really have live narration. People like live stuff. They had mm -hmm. pre-recorded CDs they were popping in 
that you know weren't up to date you know right. narrating about buildings that weren't there anymore <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, wow. and yeah. uh, they said yeah we love it you know send us a proposal so 10 11 years later i'm still at it yeah. so it's cool. amazing so That's much so fun I'm, I'm curious because you um you know education is a big part of of what you do around around this music, um, both the early music and the maritime music, um, and I'm I'm curious because you know we've we've done some uh, educational stuff and the connect and Richard and I are both parents. the The connection that young children seem to have to to this music, um, you know, like we'll sing them as lullabies and it and that works. Um, we'll sing them to classrooms and they're just you know kids will join in and there's some fun in it. Why why do you think this so these songs sort of have that? I don't know that resonance and why do you think it's important that we kind of continue to you know pass this stuff on great great question it's when you think about the nature of a sea shanty you know obviously it's it's a song with a function a purpose establish the rhythm so the sailors will sing but it's also it's it's by nature it's designed to to keep the crew energized while they're working you know, distracted from the sheer boredom of stamping around a capstan half the day. Mm -hmm. But, you know, put a story in there to distract them. They sing on it because that's also, you know, distraction from, you know, stamping around in a circle. But if you have a good shanty man on board, you're going to keep your crew energized. And how do you not join in on a song that has such energy to it? And as soon as you get a couple of people singing, I always defy kids in a classroom. I challenge you not to sing on a sea shanty. <laughs> you can't not sing on a sea shanty. They're so easy to learn, right? So you can learn it in 30 seconds, mm. right? No matter how old you are. And, <laughs> and they want to be part of it. And when I, when I go into a school, you know, I do a whaling program. We go on an imaginary whaling voyage from Nantucket, obviously. And we go around the horn and we sing, you know, all the leaving songs, the captain songs, the hauling songs you know, going around the horn songs, the whaling songs in the Pacific and the coming home songs, you know, the song about everything. Mm -hmm. And everyone, you want to join in on these songs. You want to be part of the adventure. If you present it with energy and, you know, this is cool, you know, I'm not in a costume because, you know, that's an instant turnoff to a fifth grader. <laughs> so, you know, jeans, yeah. a shirt, dude, why not? You know, got a harpoon. You see my harpoon back there. <laughs> I don't throw it, but I do threaten it. And... <laughs> Kids, kids just, you know, I sing the opening song and I turn to them and I say, you know, that's the last song I sing by myself. Mm. And to a, to a kid, they laugh at me like, yeah, right, buddy. I said, hey, challenge accepted. And then you ask for a volunteer. Of course, every hand goes up. So you, you pull up a kid whose name is Joe. And if there's no Joe in the classroom, you change somebody's name. That's easy. And you pull up a teacher who's got the tie on because that's required as your volunteers and you sing, way haul away, we'll haul away, Joe! <laughs> and if we're in the library, it's an excuse to make as much noise as possible in the library. I mean, how do you, how do you not do that? Amazing. And if you've got two volunteers, it makes it that much more accessible. I mean, you know, whatever hook you can get in there. And now mm. they, you know, they don't realize, hey, we're singing, this is fun and we're learning stuff. I wonder if after the all the recent media attention and the virality of, of TikTok, whether that's going to totally change and, you know, the kids from from moment dot are going to be chomping at the bit like shanties. Yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I mean, when, when I've when I've done these programs on Zoom now, the kids, kids are all ready to sing. Well, I miss no. Well, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. All right. Not a shanty. Sorry. <laughs> well, that, that's a point I was, I think I was mentioning that to Stefan the other day, the irony that the Wellerman, it really isn't a call and answer shanty. It's more of a wailing ballad, but you know, if it's it drawing attention to, to shanties and to that kind of thing, I have no problem with it whatsoever. And I'm happy to call it a shanty, but it's funny that the, what has sort of spurred this interest is more of a, it's, it's a, a wailing ballad. Yeah. This, the, the shanty craze based on a ballad. I, I love yes. the irony. Yes. And you know, it, I don't care. I'm not a purist. Mm. I, I do like to point it out, but not in a negative way, mm -hmm. but to point it out in terms of, well, look at the difference between that song and the shanty. Look at the structure. I mean, I need to do a clinic on it, mm. but, you know, but the, the fact that all these kids got involved, well, we could talk about TikTok separately, but because of that song and the way it was presented, I mean, you can turn any song into a shanty. 
Mm-hmm. Let's face it. And they're doing it on, on TikTok. They're taking Ariana Grande songs and shantifying yeah. them. Yeah. I don't necessarily know the songs, but they're bloody funny. It and, is you know, for sure. Why not? Yeah. I, yeah. You know, if it, what I, what I love about TikTok is that it's created a whole new generation of enthusiasts around sea shanties. Mm-hmm. And I think first and foremost, that's really important. Mm-hmm. And almost as important is the fact that singing sea shanties, are, it's so accessible and it's such a way of connection. And mm-hmm. when you've got everyone, you know, hunkered down in their homes for a year, what, what better way to connect with strangers, let alone people you know, mm-hmm. through music? Yeah. And how accessible is it that you can just do that through a simple sea shanty. Yeah, and if you yeah. listen to it two or three times, boom, you've got it, slap on a harmony, and now you're popular. I mean, what kid doesn't want yeah. that? So There's... it's just, it's a phenomenal thing. And the energy behind it, you know, there it is again, that word energy, it's just mm. it's inherent in anything to do with a sea shanty. And I love that. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So well I, I think the whole TikTok thing, who cares if it wasn't the sea shanty, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. But the, the fact that kids are getting into it and they're enjoying it and they're, you know, the other thing about TikTok is you only get 60 seconds as, as we all have, have found out probably the hard way. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my God, it's over, what happened? <laughs> oh, they didn't tell me that. So mm-hmm. you come up with a 60 second arrangement. These are like 60 second advertisements, Yeah, you know? Well, mm-hmm. what's the rest of the song? It's a very so different. You go online or you go to the singer's website or you go to YouTube and you find the rest of the song. Yeah. yeah. Now they're doing a little bit of research. Mm-hmm. Now they're now they're pursuing more of it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, for sure. And we just, you know, I think we discussed that as a as a group, as we look at um, our participation in the various ways that that shanties now show up in media. And it very much does package in a different, right? That like 15 second or 60 second snippet is very yeah. different than what you would get in a, you know, four or five minute YouTube video versus something mm-hmm. that's more long form, like what we're talking about right now. It's a very different angle. It t- takes a very different representation of the form. So um, I think yeah. lots of interesting stuff there, but it it comes down to, I think that, you know, that primal nature of call and response and of vocal teamwork. Right at the yeah. very core, core essence of our of our of our humanity is storytelling. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And it is this connection of us, like around the campfire, working together. There's actually really interesting um, uh, work studying the ability to bring people together as teams and as stronger collaborators. And they compare different things. Right. Working on drawings together. Working on different type of creative endeavors together and they and then they one of the focus groups was a was a a vocal group and everyone learned to sing together and it was by far the the best team building activity out of everything that you can do right and i think that kind of brings that like full circle it is that primal connection of call and response and singing together (laughs) that that really makes it something special something that gets right down to the very core of our of our being it's it's the singing together aspect you know that component i think is 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 the real key because you know you can do all these other group activities you know drawing something or building something or creating something but even in that action you're still doing something alone and fitting it into something but that's like that's your solo yes so there's there's room for critique and for shyness and for inhibition and all of that to happen but when you're singing together you could be the worst singer out there. No one will know. And you're still participating, creating a group sound that is group. It is not individual. It's group. Yeah. So you yeah. are folded in right from the beginning as part of this big thing. Yeah. yeah. It's not a piece that's you know, singled out to fit in. And, and I, I love that you said that it doesn't matter whether or not you can sing or what your voice is like, because it just takes head on this sort of cultural fallacy we have that if you're not like an amazing Ariana Grande like singer that you can't sing. And, you know, we see we're, we're um, in discussion with a, a groups of shanty enthusiasts online who are assembling together their own big group sings using, you know, basically patching software uh, and audio software together. And a lot of the conversation is, oh, well, 
you know, I can't sing, so I'm not, I'm not sure if I can participate. And the amount of encouragement that immediately comes back to say, of course you can, join in, it's all about the group, is just awesome to see. Yeah, yeah. there's this really cool of... thing in the art world <laughs> that um, this kind of underlying conversation around elitism in art and the idea of these, you know, these like these big name world famous gallery artists making, you know, pieces for tens of thousands or six figures and only the the 0.1% being able to yeah. afford it. It's and this it's the same it's the same uh, uh the same you know analogy can be made to music where this participatory music this is the democratization of music. Yeah. Whereas art should be something where like you go and sit and draw and enjoy the process and put it on your wall because you enjoy both what you made as well as how you made it. This is a similar thing where, you know, go and draw, go and make pottery, go and, and cook your own meal and then go and sing, right? It does, you don't yeah. need to just consume, uh, you know, Glenn Gould right. because he is the very finest, like just do it. Yeah, go participate. Yeah. And, and when you think about it, you're creating an instant community. Mm -hmm. And that's what the crew is on board these ships. Yeah. It's community. And it's community building, right? And and let's throw in diversity while we're at it, right? Right. So you know the nature of these crews were diverse. They were from all over the world. Everyone mm -hmm. were equals on board these ships, and you know, I mean, obviously there were positions, but as the general crew, you have your you know your diverse community. Everyone yeah. working together. Everyone depending on each other yeah. to make things happen. Yeah. So there was, you know, you've got instant community and on TikTok, these kids all over the world and adults, you know, I feel that sense of community when I can inspire someone to, to join in and do a duet or, you know, add, add their part, you know, whether it takes off or not, who cares? I've got, I've got one kid who responds to just about every song I put up there with his own video. He can't sing to save his life. And he, the, but the enthusiasm, you know, I mean, there's there's a disability involved there, but the enthusiasm, the, the the glow and the sheer joy on his face. So I'm connecting with him almost daily just because I can. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, you can make a difference. And if you can make a difference, then the responsibility is on you to make it. That's so and wonderful to think that, of. That to kind think of the... connection through, you know, yeah, it's virtual. It's through some, you know, platform with a funny name. But Jesus, it works. Mm. So why That's not, a, you know, and guys think, smiling, right? Think that at the very beginning of this whole TikTok thing, for me at least, I snubbed my nose at it and said, "Nah, TikTok, come on, mm. what, a weird, what a weird word," you know? Yeah, you know? yeah. I called it video crack. Yeah. <laughs> when I first looked at it, and I found the whole home screen just kind of this bombarding. But then, just like you said, like that kid is smiling every day. Yeah. He's engaging. You say yeah. it's virtual. But the connections that we make through these virtual medium are real connections. That is a real smile on the other end, right? Yes. Yeah, it's not the same as us being shoulder to shoulder. But if you can't be, you settle for the next best thing. Yep. And yep. this is this is pretty best, if you ask yep. me. Yeah. I I I had no intention of getting in on this thing. And you know, my when when it hit the news, you know, that week, what was it, January eleventh, I think it was. You know, my email, my phone, every every form of communication that I have was blowing up. I'm sure, I'm sure <laughs> yours yeah. were too. Yeah, have you seen me. this? Have you seen this? Have you seen this? Like, God, all right already. Well, I'm <laughs> not a shanty. What's the big deal? I think I woke up to 30 instant messages yeah. that morning from my yeah. Yeah, co-workers. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and I got an email. This is actually how I got onto the TikTok thing. <clears throat> I got an email through my website from the New York Times. And I knew That'll right away me. how they found me, you know, not because, you know, I have some, you know, big, you know, world renowned reputation as a shanty singer, because I don't, they went to YouTube, and they looked up what's a sea shanty, probably, right. And they found my roll the old chariot video, which yep. actually isn't even my video. But so many people have seen that thing over the years. Mm -hmm. And that video brought them to my my web page, and they contacted me and said, you know, can we do an interview tomorrow morning? So it's Tuesday evening and they want to talk to me at 10 o'clock the next morning. And I don't know what TikTok is. <laughs> and clearly they're going to want to talk to me about TikTok and hopefully shanties as well, but clearly TikTok. So you so stayed up late daughter, and did some reading. I called some friends yeah. and said, talk to me, teach me quick. 
and you know, I set up an account and, and I posted a song and I'm so proud of my first song because it's so awful. It's so, <laughs> it's so, you are such a neophyte, David, you know, all over the, 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 the video, you know, you're supposed to post duet me. Yeah. Mm. That's what I was told. So right across my face, it says duet me through the whole video. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could move the text. I didn't know you could make it go mm. away. I didn't know any of those things. So yeah. there's my first video, Blow the Man Down, with text right across my face. <laughs> Classic. I love it. I still it. don't know how to add text to it. So it's, uh, you know, don't no. feel too bad. Well, I've, I've learned a lot. I and mean, there's a whole lot more to learn. But I've learned, mm. I've learned an awful lot. I mean, I, I have talked to people and asked for advice. Mm. Uh, because, I, you know, I want to make it so it's accessible and, you know, Yep. People will, will sing with it and get it out there. So, you know, yep. I figured I, I should do some homework. Yeah. But, but you know uh, what? This is the interesting, that's the, like we talk about the lyrics and putting it over and learning about the new tool. And, and you know, on one hand, we say, well, if we can't be in person together, then this is the next best thing. But then we get into the depths of discovering the new medium and find all of these new affordances in the form itself where you know like it's not actually that easy to reach out to tens of thousands of people with you and a shanty with the lyrics beside it and to give them that education to do that outreach to bring joy mm -hmm. to that many people yeah you can't do that every like maybe at a huge festival you can have that kind of reach but you're not going to be doing that every single day so just to kind of appreciate the additional opportunities that each new that each new medium brings to the to to, oh, yeah. the, to the to the table is really interesting i well, I've I've struggled with with you know moving my my school programs to the virtual platform, but in doing that, I discovered all the advantages, you know, that that I hadn't considered, you know, and and for example, in my whaling program, you know, my my school programs are very interactive. If there's a stage, it's behind me. I'm on the floor. I, there's there's no line between me and that front row, you know. I I, I don't like being on a stage unless there's just no choice. Mm. So, you know, I want to be right in your face and with, with, um, so the, so the interaction, asking questions, obviously on zoom, that's, you know, that's a little bit constrained because it takes time. You got to unmute and all that stuff. Mm. But I was doing, um, something that isn't necessarily interactive. You know, we were, we had launched the dory boats in our whaling voyage and we were rowing after the whale and, you know, I'm yelling out all this nonsense about rowing and get there first. I'll give me first born if we're first and so forth. <laughs> and, so on. and I'm, you know, mimicking rowing, which I do in the school. And I'm rowing across the front row, right? Careful not to step on the toes in the front row as you row, you know, trying to th throw stuff out there like that. And I see some kid in his little zoom box rowing. I said, come on, everybody, row in your boat. So everyone turned and started rowing. This is so cool. I never would have thought of that. Thank you, you know? And then with the, with the instrument program, I can hold up the recorder much closer and say, here's the window. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what makes it work. You know, all the vibration happens here. If you're in a school, you know, you're way back here. They can't mm -hmm. see that. Yep. Trust me, there's a hole here, folks, yep. right? Mm -hmm. But if you've got Zoom, you get it right up there. So there are advantages. And if you're just, you know, present and aware, you know, and, and, and I, you know, I work on the fly a lot because, you know, I do the same program, same material, but it's always different kids. Mm. So to me, it's always different, even though it's pretty much the same, but the interaction is different. And with Zoom, they're interacting differently. You got to respond. So same with, same with TikTok and the virtual platform. Somebody throws up a request. Oh, look, absolutely. I'll give you that song. You want to hear that? Why shouldn't I? What one of the other real advantages is uh, its global nature. Um, you know, the fact that you're in Gloucester, we're up here in Toronto. We just duetted some, uh, some folks over in Poland, but just building, building a cool global network. Like now, now we're just chomping at the bit for the pandemic to be over so we can actually go and visit people and sing, you know, where they are. I find that the, the, the concept of technology and the role that it plays in disseminating shanty is really interesting. Um, and David, a little uh, just previously, you were mentioning the concept of singing together. And that reminded me of my dad talking about growing up in post uh, World War II Britain. And there was a radio show called Singing Together. And they wow. would teach them kind of little bits of folk songs. And, uh, you know, my dad is in his. Uh, He'll be 78 in a, in a couple of months. He still remembers that show very vividly and the, the presenter, William Appleby and whatnot. But the sea shanties 
was the thing that sort of popped out the most for him. And the fact that this, we're talking about, you know, the 1940s here. And I just find it interesting when you think that it had such a long lasting impact on someone like my father. And that if you look at how, you know, over the years, you know, a few years ago, there was a video game, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and that brought shanties to a, a different audience entirely yeah, to the point I where we have people coming that. up to us requesting shanties that they had learned in the game. And now with TikTok, it's kind of interesting that this older form of music that isn't used anymore for those, for the tasks that they were in, in, uh, intended for, that somehow through these different changes in technology and media, somehow shanties keep res resurfacing. It, yeah, some somebody commented on on one of my TikTok songs. It you know how oh how did they do it? I should have written this down. It was something like you 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 were doing sea shanties before they were cool. That's what it was. <laughs> you, you've been doing sea shanties since before they were cool. And I said no no no. They've always been cool. People just didn't mm. know it yet. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you know? I like that. They've always been cool. And I think they've always been popular. It's just uh -huh. a question of, you know, when when do you figure it out? And yeah, that's right. And there's this there's a special kind of energy to it. And I know uh, I'm I'm a if the guitars didn't give it away there. I'm a I'm a I'm a musician. I've been gigging for over 20 years, and uh, there's a spot in Toronto called the Cameron House, right downtown on Queen Street. And it, it's a hub of music in Toronto. There's bands there. Um, well, not during the pandemic, but usually yeah. you, you know there'd be three different times a day where you'd have different bands going on in the front room and you've got a back room and everything. And I've played there wow. many times. It's a really great institution in Toronto. Awesome. But I remember the first time we sang with Press Gang Mutiny and we hit that first chord of Patty Doyle's boots and everyone stopped talking. And I've never seen this uh, ever in my life with any other kind of music where people are yeah. just like, well, hold on, what's going on? And just the sound of just the, the sort of raw voices with no yep. instrumental backing, it was really fascinating. That video of Roll the Old Chariot on, on YouTube, that, I mean, it looks to, you know, to, for people who, who see that, who think, you know, who aren't aware that it was part of the Maritime Festival mm. and that most of those people in the crowd are singers right. or, you know, shanty enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. um, it, it looks like a spontaneous combustion of song, <laughs> you know, in downtown Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And I've seen that video embedded in blog posts as if, you know, this is just a spontaneous thing. Mm. And, and, right. and yet there's a draw to it, even if it's, you know, even it's presented, you know, in, in, in a way that it wasn't. There was one blog post, the heading, oh my God, I nearly died. The, the heading was, old guy steps out of a crowd. <laughs> when he looks up, you'll never guess what happens. You know, clickbait. You know, there's a picture of me just starting to walk out, you know, with my head down. I was like, what do you mean, old guy? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but then, you know, just, you know, well, we oh gotta find goodness. out what happens. And they think it was just a spontaneous thing. And, you know, it well could be. You know, I, one of the things I really wanna do mm. when this pandemic is over is I wanna go to South Station in Boston, which is the train station, it's the hub. And it's got great acoustics. And I want to do um, a shanty flash mob. Yeah. I, you I have to really, let us yeah. know. We will yeah. we'll make oh, it I would definitely <laughs> trip. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, be, we'll probably there. get thrown make in jail pilgrimage. for doing it without a permit. But, you know, it's not a flash mob if you plan it. <laughs> but I, I just, it would be so cool and so easy. And, you know, people yeah. would join in. They wouldn't say, oh, come on, quiet. I'm on my iPod. Yeah. You know, yes. you gotta be. You'd have to be ready. Sing. You'd have to be ready to deliver Wellerman as the second song, though. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. You know, it's, know, it's almost the new Barrett's Privateers. We always get do Barrett's Privateers. Yeah. Like, oh God, here yeah. we go. Yeah, great song, but no, you know, there's no song that's good enough to sing at every single gig. But you know, you think about the backstory of of, of Barrett's Privateers, right? You, I'm, yeah. Obviously, you all know it. Mm -hmm. you no. Know, he was feeling left out. Yes. He wanted to participate. Yeah. And yeah. God knows the world wanted Stan to participate. So yeah. if, mm. if that's what we get from it, yeah. thank God. But yeah. that's funny, you David, because I, I, I tend to think, I've thought about that story numerous times. Um, I don't know if it's worth mentioning the whole story to people who don't yeah. 
know it, but I believe it was at the Northern Lights Festival in Sudbury, Ontario. And uh, Stefan, you can verify this. I think it was, was it Friends of Fiddler's Green were singing yeah. sea shanties after, yeah. after the day's uh, events. And he and didn't Stan, know yeah. He didn't know them, but the, what I find them. hilarious is that he, well, I guess I'll finish the story and then I'll, I'll have my commentary. So the story is <laughs> that rather than sit down and learn these shanties, uh, Stan stormed off and he penned Barrett's Privateers that night in call and response shanty form. And the story I heard, I don't know if this is true, but the following morning, he slams the lyrics down on the breakfast table in front of the guys from Friends of Fiddler Green, Fiddler's Green, and he says, suck on this, you limey bastards. Yeah. That's the story I heard. But now what I find hilarious is, uh, David, you're saying he was left out, but he could have easily just sat there and learned a bunch of these <gasps> songs, you know? But he, from what I heard from Stan, about Stan, is he, he did enjoy the limelight too. So it's kind of oh, funny yeah, that... There, you, you, can, you, can, you can assume there was a healthy ego involved there. Mm -hmm. and, and well deserved, you know. I'm not casting aspersions oh, yeah. by any stretch, at least not with three Canadians on board here. <laughs> but you know, think think about where he was coming from. He's a songwriter. Yes, true. Right. So he's not going to necessarily know the traditional songs. Mm. He only, as far as I know, he sang "Made on the Shore" and uh, and "Rolling Down to Old Maui," which yep. a lot of people think he wrote. Mm. And I'm correcting that on TikTok, you know, yep. on my version. They say, oh, more Stan. I say, yeah, happy to be more Stan. But just so you know, he didn't write that. Mm. Oh, yeah. if you look at Stan's background, he was a singer-songwriter. Yeah, that's so true. So he, and yeah. thank goodness, because yeah. he got a great song out of it. Hey, yes, we indeed. love, we do love, we love our Stan Rogers for sure. But there's a certain oh. element of historical accuracy that you need to make sure to, to add to looking at his body of work where he was certainly inspired by the maritime history. A lot of people, in, even in Canada, assume that he was from the East Coast. I do believe he was from Hamilton, Ontario, Yeah, his, his parents were from the East right? Coast, but he was born in Hamilton. Yeah, so I, I know, like, and, and, and the tradition, this tradition certainly informed his music, mm. um, but, uh, but to your point, right? Maui is not his song. Right, and, uh, but he and did James, write another shanty. A lot of people don't do it. The which is the other shanty? Uh, which, yeah. The white collar holler. Okay. Got it, old boys. Can you code it? Woo! Program it right. <laughs> Nothing ever happens in this life of mine. I'm holding up the data on the Xerox line. That's true. <laughs> right. yep. Uh, yep. As an IT guy, I should have. TikTok shortly. <laughs> I was going to say, as an IT guy, I should have that one locked down. Yeah, you should. Yeah. The the notion of of writing shanties is an interesting one because the shanties themselves are, the verses can be so improvisational, right? Um, so I'm. I'm curious about about your process, David, as you're you know putting together an arrangement of a song to you know find verses, tweak verses. Do you do you clean up verses and words? Well, I clean it up for schools uh, and in general because I I just think it just you know I don't want to leave anybody out because they you know there's a bad word in there. You know when I sing "Blow You Winds" in schools, I sing and darn their eyes with every other word instead of damns their eyes. Right. You know? Yeah. But, you know, and it's, you know, it's not hard to do that. But yeah, I change shanties all the time. You know, Holloway Joe, once, once I loved the, once I met a Gloucester girl, but she was dumb and lazy way, Holloway, well, Holloway Joe. But then I met at your town here and she was, she drove me nearly crazy, you know. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you change it according to where you are. From yeah. Boston Harbor, it's a great song. But uh, you know, there's a, there's a there's a verse. We're Boston born and we're Boston bred. Well, wherever I am, if I'm in Westford, we're Westford born and we're Westford bred. Away, Rio. That's not Boston Harbor. That's Away, Rio. You know, see how they blend together? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're thick in the arm and we're thick in the head. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and we're bound for the Rio Grande. Yeah, yeah. So throw in their town and. Oh, they're singing about us. This is so cool. Yes, because <laughs> Westford's a, a, a you know an oceanside town. No, it's not yeah. it's inland. <laughs> so yeah, I change it all the time. There's there's one I actually just learned earlier this week. Roll and go, and you know I looked it up in Hugel, and it's you know so I shipped away on a Bedford whaler. Well, well I'm not singing Bedford. <laughs> First of all, it's New Bedford. Because New Bedford's the whaling town. Bedford is next to, you know, Shishi Concord and Carlisle. So that's <laughs> no, no ships in there. But I changed it to Nantucket. That was, you know, right off the bat. Mm -hmm. I didn't even learn the song and I'd already changed it. Yep. So, yeah. 
the the whole point of these of the shanties obviously is you sing until the job is done mm-hmm. you don't sing till you run out of words because the guy's got to keep working yeah. so part of your job <laughs> is to be able to make up verses or switch to another song or take verses from another song and fit them into this one that's actually what roll and go all is, is all about that's sally brown and roll and go combined yeah and you know mm-hmm. now you got 150 verses if you need them yeah yeah so yep. now you um you have a recent composition that I think you were you were gonna sing for us to put us to the test. Segways are us. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It was a good one. It's like I planned it. <laughs> yeah, I do. I uh, and I wrote it for for TikTok to 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 sort of see if I could do it within that sixty second time frame. I took um, I took a number of shanties. I won't give away the number. Uh, I'm learning now. Don't give away the number. Let your listeners see how many they can identify. How many shanties did I fit into a 60 second time frame? Now, this not being TikTok, I'm not confined to the 60 seconds. So it might be a little longer, it might be a little shorter, but I practiced it on TikTok and I think I got it in the 60 second time frame, I think on the 25th attempt. So I'm only gonna sing it once here, that's for sure. But uh, it, it is not the easiest song to sing along to, which is sort of contraindicated for a shanty. But I, I couldn't help myself. I've done this before. Um, I work with an organization called Revels in Cambridge, and I've been, I've been performing with them for this is now 41 years. Jeez, I got to get out more. But <laughs> I did a, a 40 year sort of anniversary celebration and I took a song from every show that I've done, that I've sung, some song I've presented, and I, I snipped it down and I did a medley of 40 years of Rebels in five minutes. Wow. Because they're not shanties, they're just a little bit longer, but still only one line, but 40 years worth, wow. it took five minutes to do it, but it's a medley just like the one I'm about to do. And it, you know, it's how my brain works. It doesn't so the work test, for everybody. So the test is to identify every shanty or the test is to sing along? <laughs> Everything. Oh my goodness. There, okay. There's several tests here. Can you name them? Can you, can, can you identify them? Can you sing along with them? And can you figure out how many there are? Okay. So there's three challenges. Oh geez, I feel like I need a notepad here. All right. Yeah, seriously. Well, you're recording it, so you can go back. You have that advantage. Yeah, we'll use the <laughs> technology. You need to do it on the fly. That's the hard part. Well, that's, <laughs> the right? fun, that's the fun part now. Come on. Okay. Okay. So you ready? I got my notes. Let's go. Shanty Medley by David Coffin, because why not? Oh, we'd be all right if we make it round the horn to me way. Hey, blow the man down with lies all on my knee. Way all the way, we'll haul away, Joe. Cape Cod girls don't have no combs. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Whoop, jamboree, whoop, jamboree. Down, 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 dairy, down. Skipper's in the wardroom drinking gin. Donkey riding, donkey riding. Come down, you bunch of roses. Sailing down along the coast of high Barbary. Boney was a warrior. Fall on the bowl and the bowl. Rolling, roll, Alabama, roll, rolling down to old Maui. I thought I heard the old man say, strike the bell, second mate, let us go below until we sight gay head off old Martha's vineyard. Get up, Jack John, sit down. Wow. <laughs> Unreal. I, I gave up trying to count after like five shanties. Um, the count down, dairy down. Is that the dreadnought? That's the dreadnought. That was the one. I was. I was. I was like, I think I know this one, but that could be any number of shanties. But yeah, dreadnought. There was okay. one that mentioned you know, the whole down, dairy down series. Oh, get up, Jack. Let John sit down. I think that's outward and homeward bound. Is that not? That's get up, Jack. John, sit down. Oh, okay. There's <laughs> <laughs> definitely. I've heard that line in in the other song. Oh wow. yeah, that's that, you know. Steal and borrow freely. There you uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of, uh, you, you sang Blow the Man Down. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, that was you singing in the opening credits of the film, also you, titled. You, entitled you are Blow not Man mistaken. Down. Yeah. Yes. An- another job from the uh, Roll the Old Chariot video on YouTube. Oh, wow. They found me on YouTube. 
they had filmed the entire movie already. It was already in the bag with placeholders for those songs. Okay. And they hadn't found the, the right person yet. And when the, when the writers, directors, two women, fabulous, fabulous women, what a, what a duo, uh, they found that Roll the Old Chariot video late November of 20, 2018 and called me up. They must have just watched it because when yeah. they called me up, I answered the phone and I had these two women laughing on the phone. They were still laughing. And I mean, not that it was funny necessarily, but they were just giddy with anticipation mm -hmm. because they had decided I was the guy that they'd been looking for. They just didn't know it. Wow. You know, they, 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 they referenced the energy in the song and you know, th that I could sing and you know, nothing about look or anything like that. I'm <laughs> sure. But, but you know, they put those two things together and they said, you're, you're perfect for, for this role. Oh. You know, would you be interested in singing, you know, for this movie? And I said, well, I don't know. Let me think about it. Sure. Okay. <laughs> it was wow. about that much thought involved. Yeah. But, uh, you know, two weeks later, we were in the studio and I had three singers come in with me that I knew would know the, the two shanties that they sang on. And we didn't warm up. I didn't tell them what version I was going to do, you know, major, minor, you know, because they're different versions of, you know, Blood Red Roses, for example. Mm. And our whole sound check was on a different song because I wanted us to be singing it for the first time together. And I wanted that to be... And, and in both cases, that was the track they used. Cool. I love that. First yeah. time through the song. Cool. And then, you know, because that's standard procedures to do it, in the, do it in the studio. But then I had to go on location a couple of weeks later and, and sing it live. You know, and I had, I had the earbud so I could, you know, sing to the existing track. And they had three guys. Those three fishermen are not the singers. They're actors. They're, okay. you know, they're required by film law whatever it is yeah you know i can't remember what what the institution is i don't do that stuff actor but, maybe uh, they have to have actors lip syncing mm -hmm. but for some reason i was allowed to to sing live and be in the movie but i sang you know i sang it live you know sitting on the boat or sitting on the lobster trap and in both cases first take and they used the, the live track not the studio track of of my singing which which really meant a lot to me because it was much more authentic. Yeah, you know, a few degrees below zero, you know, on a cold December morning at five o'clock. Cool. You know, and that's what it looked like, and that's what it probably sounded like, for all I know. But it just they they took the original track, which which I was really grateful for. I really love that. They, they that reminds me. me. They dubbed me one take shanty man. <laughs> nice. That reminds me of uh, Doc Watson talking to the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band on their album um, "Will a Circle Be Unbroken?" And he says right before he launches into, I think it's Tennessee Stud or something, and he says to the band, uh, "Let's really try to nail this on the first take because you you lose a bit of the energy and the magic every take after that." So yeah, that's always yeah, stuff. Every, every subsequent take has, you know, now you're focused on something. Mm -hmm, now you're, mm -hmm. you know, you're aiming at something that didn't work as well. You thought, and the energy is completely different. You can Absolutely. always tell, you can always feel it. Yeah. You start I to overthink. Takes. Yes. I, I draw the line after three and definitely four. I, I can never do more than four takes of something. Yeah. I, it's one, with, one with take the TikTok Jimmy. thing, my <laughs> takes are based on the timing. Mm, okay. You know, oh man. I cut that last word. Can't do that. Mm. Got to do it a little bit faster. Oh, I'll just do two choruses. I won't add that extra verse. Mm -hmm. got, it's got to fit, yeah. you know. But that's that's why I end up driving my wife crazy in the other <laughs> in the other room. It's like, oh my god, he's singing it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, look on the uh, on the topic of of first takes. Thank you for being our first guest um, and for you know, for putting up with us as we figured out how this all works. Uh, it's been a really enjoyable conversation. It's been great it's fun. Time. Yeah, I'm, I'm always up for clean, dumb fun, you know, <laughs> why, why not? Well, and uh, keep us posted on that, uh, the, the flash mob in South Station there. We will, uh, we'll make the trip. Absolutely. Get, get your yeah. shots and come on down. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Can't wait. I don't think it'll be anytime soon, but 
Mm. It'll, uh, I, it, it's on my list of things to, to accomplish. But when it yeah. gets here, it'll be worth it. Yes. Yeah. We hope so. Yeah. Famous yeah. last words. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks guys. This has been fun. Thanks for inviting me to be your guinea pig. Uh, <laughs> hope I didn't squeal too much. <laughs> this was great. That was so great. Thank you so much. Thank for you so your much, time. David. All right, Thank you, you guys. That was awesome. All right, cheers. I'll I'll see you on the platforms. See you then. Right <laughs> yeah, sounds good. <laughs> All right, that was just an awesome time with uh, with Mr. David Coffin. I learned a lot. Mm. I certainly had a couple of good chuckles. And I can't wait for us all to get down uh, into Boston and to do that flash mob shanty. So that'll be mm -hmm. lots of fun. Um, that, was, that was great. I had a really good time. Let's, let's keep amazing. moving. Um, one other thing that we want to do with each episode is uh, we're going to have today's tall ship. Stefan, will you lead us in a discussion on today's tall ship, please? It's, it's my pleasure. And the first tall ship to get the title of today's tall ship. Uh, is one that's near and dear to my own heart. Uh, it's a boat that I sailed on for, for many years and ended up captaining. Uh, it's the TS Playfair, uh, formerly based out of Toronto, Ontario, now based out of Hamilton. And this is part of a, a program called, used to be called Toronto Brigantine, now goes by Briggs. And uh, they operate have operated two tall ships. They've got Playfair left now. She is a 72-foot hermaphrodite brigantine. Uh, she's about uh, 50 tons, 15-foot beam, and just an absolute pleasure to sail, steel hull. And what's amazing about uh, Briggs and the TS Playfair is the sail training programs that they um, operate for, for youth. Um, so most of the crew outside of the captain and the first mate are aged between 13 and 19, and they operate sail training programs for a week or two weeks at a time throughout the Great Lakes. So if you are interested, if you're you know in Ontario or, or near enough by, uh, and you know somebody who's in that age range, I can't recommend this program enough. Um, it is just awesome and life-changing and a real opportunity to get out on sea with some, uh, some, some of your peers and just learn a ton and have a ton of fun. If you want to learn more, um, you can find out more at briggs.ca. Uh, James, do you want to do you want to chat quickly about what we've got coming up in the next episode and who our next uh, two guests are for the next episode? Absolutely. So for the next episode, we're going to feature Mr. Jeff Kaufman, who used to run the Mystic Sea Music Festival in Mystic Seaport, and also Mr. Mart Bernier, who uh, is also very involved in Mystic. And we're going to hear about what they've been up to in the last few months, and uh, not all shanty related, but with a definite focus on the shanty community. And speaking of which, we're about uh, 10 minutes away from the Mystic Shanty Blast. So uh, if you're hearing this now, it's already happened. I apologize. <laughs> but um, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to that this afternoon. It's nice to see the Mystic Sea community doing a virtual event. Well, thanks so much, guys, for being here. And thanks uh, to everyone out there for watching. Um, if you like this, if this was uh, something you'd like us to do more of, uh, like and subscribe. Leave us a comment too if there are guests you'd like to see us talking to, things you'd like to see us discuss on the show. And certainly um, if you are in the world of sail training and you've got a boat you think or, uh, or a program that you think we should feature on the show, we'd love to hear from you. Leave it in the comments. Find us on, the, on our website, pressgangmutiny.ca. Get in touch that way. Whatever it is, uh, we'd love to hear from you. We're really excited about this and uh, it means a lot that you were here. So thanks so much. Thanks everybody. Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Bully down in Shingo now. Sally is the girl that I love dearly. Way, hey, bully in the alley. Sally is the girl that I splice nearly. Bully down in Shingo now. So help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey. Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley, bully down in Shinbo now. I left my gal to go a sailing. Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley. I left my sal to go a whaling. Bully down in Shinbo now. So help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Bully down in Shinbo now. I bought her silks and I bought her laces Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley I took her out to all of the places Bully down in Shinbo now So help me Bob, I'm bully in the alley Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley Help me Bob, I'm bully in the alley Bully down in 
Shin Bone For seven long years I courted Sally. Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley. All she did was a dilly and a dally. Bully down in Shin Bone So help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Bully down in Shin Bone I shipped on board of a Charleston liner Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley Alabama fine, but St. George is finer Bully down in Shinbone Al So help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley Bully down in Shinbone Al when I get to St. Lou, I'm gonna tie up at a key. Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley. She says there's a spot there just for me. I'll be bully down in Shinbo now. So help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley. Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley. Bully down in Shinbo now. I shipped on board of the Robert E. Lee boys Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley Made a lot of money, spent it fast and free I'll be bully down in Shinbo now So help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley Bully down in Shinbo now I'm gonna visit my Sal just as often as I'm able Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley I hope I get there before she slips her cable Bully down in Shinbo now So help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley Bully down in Shinbo now We got a British ammunition and French champagne Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley When I get to Charleston, gonna feel no pain I'll be bully down in Shinbo now So help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley Bully down in Shinbo now So help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley Way, hey, hey, bully in the alley Help me, Bob, I'm bully in the alley Bully down in Shinbone